The breaking news from the NBA is not good. Rookie Chet Holmgren will miss the entire upcoming season because of a Liz Frank injury. Chet Holmgren is a dude that's seven feet one. He ain't even 200 pounds. That's how skinny and frail he is. He seems to be the biggest gamble. Are you concerned about his frame? Anytime we hear about a big man in foot injuries, guys who had their careers cut short. I just hope this isn't an ominous bad sign. Obviously, there's going to be some concern. Are people focusing on the wrong thing with him? Chet Holmgren can be celebrated like the next coming of Kevin Durant. That's where we got to slow down a little bit. He's minute bowl skinny. If he turns sideways, you may not be able to see him. I can't look at Chet Holmgren now and somehow see Kevin Durant. In the real NBA, there's going to be a man in front of him. It's going to be different. Has the NBA forgotten about its next superstar? Have we forgotten about perhaps the next rookie of the year? in Chet Holmgren. A very large statement to say I know, especially when we just had one of the best drafts in recent memory. Especially when Victor Wembenyama, perhaps the greatest prospect we have ever seen, will be Chet's competition for Rookie of the Year. But we have seen two things. One, we have seen the Oklahoma City Thunder prove to be the best young roster in the NBA with Shea and Josh Giddy if they also have a franchise cornerstone in Chet. And two, we have seen that before the injury that sidelined him, we have to remember just how incredible Chet has already proven to be. When looking at Chet Holmgren's freshman season at Gonzaga compared to the freshman years of elite defensive big men, Anthony Davis, Joel Embiid, and Jaron Jackson Jr., Chet's freshman season stacks right up there with some of the best defensive big men in the game right now. Keep in mind for defensive rating, the lower the better, and also keep in mind that among the NBA's elite defensive big men who played at least one year in college for us to compare to. I think we can all agree numbers wise. A college Chet Holmgren ranks ahead of Joel Embiid and Jaron Jackson Jr. and sits just below Anthony Davis as a defensive prospect coming into the NBA. So what's up guys, Mike here and yes, that is the type of prospect we are looking at in Chet Holmgren. We have what five years ago would have been described as a unicorn. A player who can shoot threes, can create off the dribble in the half court, runs the break and finishes at an extremely high level in transition, and with an absurd seven foot six wingspan, has proven he can dominate the game on the defensive end in a way that is simply disruptive. It was just one year ago today when Chet Holmgren was seen as a potential generational prospect. A do-it-all freak of nature who, if he could just put on some weight, could be an all-time great in the making. Did we forget about his summer league performance? The one where he not only dominated in a way that made us all shake our heads, but also, did we forget that Chet, after finishing with 23 points and 6 blocks, took to Twitter and simply laughed, telling the rest of the league what a joke it was that anyone would think that he was the number two player in his class. Here's what Chet did. One steal leads to the other. Holmgren up top and down. Both teams had was just got, driving into the paint, creating a pass-pass situation. Uh-oh. Confident. The second free ball by the number two pick. And the heck, you have to find an answer for the unicorn. Step back block by Holmgren. That's what he does. Here's Law. Baseline. Takes it right at Holmgren. And guess what? Denied. But before we continue, guys, I'm very excited to say that today's video is sponsored by our friends at SeatGeek, the number one rated ticketing app that has more than 70,000 live events on it every single day. Now, of course, I am a giant NBA fan, and I've been using SeatGeek to get great tickets as we smile through the pain. I also love Theo Vaughn, though, and he is playing in my area, and I use SeatGeek to get 10 out of 10 tickets for that show. And speaking of 10 out of 10, the dot system also makes finding tickets very easy. Red means bad, green means good. I personally use SeatGeek whenever I buy tickets, you know that SeatGeek is hooking you guys up. With my promo code 2KMike, you are going to get $20 off your first SeatGeek order. The link to go download SeatGeek is in my description right now. And again, guys, that is $20 off your first purchase. $20 off, all you have to do is use my promo code 2KMike. Link is in the description. Thank you to SeatGeek for sponsoring today's video. And for now, let's get back into today's video. With this game, Chet showcased not only his elite talent, but also going further, his true generational potential as a two-way defensive star. And again, 
just one season ago. He had a freak injury, and now he's looking better than ever. Remember, Chet Holmgren only did not play in his rookie season because of a freak injury, an injury with LeBron James that was just that, a one-time thing. This was not some kind of degenerative condition that led to an injury. The wrong situation just happened to Chet, and so now, with year two, I think we have to go back into the mindset of where we were last season, because we just saw the Oklahoma City Thunder seriously prove that if they do have a generational talent at center, they also have a potential trio of young players that could take over the Western Conference whenever Nikola Jokic is done with it. Because with Chet, the numbers speak for themselves with his freshman season. He showcased a historically dominant skill package on the defensive end that had him in 2022 leading the entire NCAA in defensive rating with a rating of 78.7, the fourth ever since that stat was tracked. That was just one season ago when Chet also just so happened to help Gonzaga finish as the number one ranked team in the nation, while also he led the entire NCAA in effective field goal percentage and, going back to the defensive end, was second in defensive plus minus, finishing with a number of 7.5 that makes him eighth in history since the stat was tracked. So looking at all of these defensive numbers, he is going to have a chance to follow players such as Blake Griffin and Joel Embiid, who sat out their first pro year, but then in their first real rookie season, were able to use their pro experience to dominate early and grab rookie of the year. Chet is on the thunder with a young superstar in Shea Gilgis Alexander, along with a potential soon to be all-star in Josh Giddy. Most young players in the NBA get, to be honest, screwed by the team that they are playing on as a young player. For top five picks in the NBA, the reality is a harsh one. Your situation as a player is out of your control and you are often heading to a franchise that is in shambles, or at least the roster is far, far from contention. Meanwhile though, for Chet, OKC is the ideal situation for him. A young, talented group of competitors who will be pushing for a middle of the Western Conference playoff seed next year. What better environment could we ask for, especially knowing they need a center? That is what we're going to be watching next year, and at this point in time, when it comes to Rookie of the Year, I think we can all agree that Victor Wembanyama looks like he is going to be a generational prospect, one of the most special players we have ever seen. It is here, though, that I do want to point to Scotty Barnes' Rookie of the Year trophy right now. If Chet is on the Thunder and they are competing for the middle of the Western Conference while Wemby is playing on a Spurs team that is more in the 12 to 14 range, because let's be honest, San Antonio's roster does need a lot of help. If that is the case, Wemby could put up better numbers, but with winning on his side, I would definitely not count out Chet. It is here that I do want to bring up the fact that despite their similar makeups in height and weight, Victor Wembanyama and Chet Holmgren have vastly different games. Wemby is training his overall game to be that of an offensive superstar quickly. We were watching him launch off the dribble NBA threes against the G League Ignite last year. Chet needs to be seen in a different category, and that is one of an absolutely elite defensive star prospect. Defensive star. That is what Chet is in terms of prospects, at least. A potential freak who could control the paint, protect the rim, and use his mobility to move those feet and defense switches in a way where, again, he disrupts entire offenses. I don't want to say Giannis because Chet Holmgren is not as fast as Giannis, but Giannis is not as tall as Chet. Giannis's nickname is the Greek Freak. The reason being that on the court, he just does things that other players are not able to do on the defensive end. Same goes with Chet Holmgren. We have watched him already block the careers out of people. And one of the biggest reasons as to why Chet Holmgren is such an elite defensive prospect is that Chet is an extremely, extremely high level hustle player who will do anything to win basketball games, but also has the talent of a top tier young player. That is a combination on defense that is something teams dream of. So far, we have watched the number one pick in Chet's class, Paulo Bancaro, have such a successful rookie year that he is already a part of FIBA's Team USA World Cup roster. On draft night, many believed Orlando would go with Chet over Paulo. Chet was seen on draft night by many as better than Paulo. Here's what the Athletics' final 2022 mock draft had to say, which had Chet ranked at number one. The word unique is overused in scouting circles, but Holmgren is that. There has never 
been a prospect like this to enter the draft. He is one of the best defenders I have ever evaluated as a teenager. He's positionally elite already and has every length based tool at seven foot with a seven foot six wingspan. His anticipation and instincts are insane. Those are some huge words. And as for his own teammates, I love what Shea Gilgis Alexander has to say about Shea because this isn't just some fluff. Shea said, the kid wants to be good and I think that's the biggest thing. He wants to be really good. He wants to prove himself to the world. And that fire in him is impressive. And I think he's gonna be a heck of a basketball player. I 100% believe that. We have seen the work that Chet has put in. Yes, the muscle might not be there yet, but I think you can certainly tell a difference. I think that Chet is just working at one of those Kevin Durant, not able to do a single bench press of 180 pounds at the draft combine type of body type. So if anything, putting on that weight might have great long-term effects for Chet Holmgren's future. And I do really believe in Chet's talent. I also believe in his on-court motor, and I believe in his work ethic to keep playing at an elite level. I think the real question is, after this freak injury, will he stay healthy? Will it have any long-term effects? I really hope not, because I do think that if Chet does stay healthy, he's going to be a special, special player. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way you never miss a video. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.